Hey guys, welcome back to an exciting new series on Viper iOS Swift app using Rx Swift. This is pretty exciting to me as I'm big on Rx Swift and reactive programming. In this series, I will try my best to bring in the best practices which is being followed in the industry of the usage of Rx Swift. So basically, I'm just going to focus more on implementation rather than explaining the concept because there are tons of explanations available on the internet about Rx Swift, but very less content on the real implementations. So without any more delay, let's get started. So I'm going to start this tutorial using an existing um, Viper Swift project, which was built, which is called Gr Green Grocery, which I had built uh, some time back. And uh, those tutorial episodes are available right now. So instead of Rx, whatever we are using in this project is plain closures for bringing in um, data from one layer to the other. So whatever we are going to do in this episode or at least in this series is that we will get rid of all the closures and then replace it, uh, all the signaling layers using Rx Swift. So before even beginning, let's bring in Rx uh, in the Cocoa Pod. So for that, let's go to our uh, pod section. Let me just drag that pod here so you don't see any Rx content yet there. So let's go to the Rx reactive programming um, Rx GitHub location and see where what we need to add. So where is that? documentation let's go to rx swift so it gives you all the explanations required like why use rx the basics of getting started and everything traits and everything so we are going to use the concepts directly instead of just uh, reading through the documentation so first thing first let's add the rx swift and rx coco content to our coco pod so you already have real realm and all which is already being used in the project so just that we are bringing in these two right now so rx swift along with rx coco is bringing in some things very specific to ui kit so that's what rx coco will bring in so one of the advantages of uh, learning or implementing in reactive programming or rx is that once you learn this it can easily be uh, used in any other platforms let's say if you are having to use rx java or rx um, any any rx uh, c sharp or rx.net whatever you do in other platforms the approach is the same because it is coming from the reactive x community so one, that is one of the biggest advantage of uh, learning uh, Rx or reactive programming. So I have included uh, this part right now. So let's just recompile and bring in now these two, the Rx Swift and Rel, uh, Rx Swift and Rx Coco. Compiling might take a little while. So let's start with the there are different layers for Viper. So we have a service layer, we have an interactor, then we have the presenter, we have the view and um, even the router. So let's start decoupling things starting from the service layer. So whatever I'm going to target today is the login, uh, the login layer. So in the account, not the login. So sign up, that is the first thing. Let's decouple sign up where we have things like, uh, uh, in the presenter everything is happening let's say if you start a sign up uh, of a, a user it goes through this validate first and then goes through the sign up function there's two things which are happening so this is what we will right now decouple so it is make, give, giving a call to a use case which is an interactor function called sign up so auth interactor it's called a sign up function so right now it is using a completion block so this is what we will get rid of and even before that we have to go to the authorize service and there are two closures here and success and a failure 
closures. So whatever we do is we get rid of this first. So it's compiling first right now. So as I said, we'll, we are just going to concentrate on sign up features today. So let's, because the whole flow is going to start from the view controller where it starts by clicking on a button, tapping on the button which start, which gives a call to the presenter to validate. And if it is valid, then we do a sign up. So this is what the whole flow is what we, we are going to make in the Rx Swift way. So let's start from this layer. So auth service, it's already compiling, it's giving some error. Auth API, I don't think that's an issue. It's just some other thing because it's going to run properly. So we have this sign up function and it is having a corresponding protocol where we need to start making the change. So as you can see, this sign up function on the closure success is accepting a status code and data as two parameters. And once that is done, it's just sent, sends it across through the auth service. So let's just start first thing first. I'm going to get rid of this and replace it into the Rx version. So there are two. First thing, let's import Rx Swift. That's what we will reuse here. So there are two. Th there are two ways we can do it. First thing is we can return a regular observable of this type. Let's say. So underscore is not needed. Status code and data is what we will return. So this is the first approach. I'll show you both. First is observable. If I had an observable, I'm going to use whatever I did is I just replaced these closures, success and failure with something called as an observable with these type with uh, this uh, tuple as the type of this observable. So I just replace that. Now let's see what all changes I'll have to make. So it's saying already it is complaining that these success and failures are not there. So auth API is where I made that change. So same change I'll have to use here. So for that, let me just bring that function here. So this is that return type right now. Observable of status code and that's a change we need to make here. I'm getting rid of this. And bringing that observable here. So it's going to ask for some changes. So I need to also import Rx Swift here. Now that error is gone. But then it is going to ask me it does not have success and failure. So what is that we need to replace it now with? So as you can see, it is this function is going to return of a, a type called observable. So for that, we need to create or return an observable and create have this create block inside. So let's bring in whole of this thing inside this return the first thing we are done with the first thing still we don't have the success and failure so what we need to do for that so it is already just that we replaced this with observable.create right now and it is expecting to return a disposable time so we also need to do that here return disposables.create if you need to do any kind of cleanup, let's keep this block here. So this first step is done where we need created this return type here, which is of type observable.create. It also will need this type to be defined. Observable of int data. These two needs to be written. That's what you and we will receive here. So as soon as we have created this, we can use this subscriber parameter just comment this and then use that subscriber on you get a function called on next that is like sending one signal 
as soon as it is received from let's say you made a request to the server sign up ser server it returned made a request using http service and it, re it returned you a response and this response once passed parsed gives you a status code and data this is what the signal that you need to send through this subscriber so for that status code and data that's done so i can just get rid of this success right now so this subscriber is now taking care of sending this data so what happens if there is a failure you, for that also rx is providing us on error so on error what should happen so you you just need to send an error type here so we here we were just sending a string so instead we will have to send an error type here so i have already define something like a sign up error if you go there it's nothing but sign up error which is inheriting from a type error it's an enum and it can accept a custom error type accepting an error uh, string so i can do that here as well so error type dot uh, error and i can just say pass the string signing in failed whatever we had done at the bottom so i can get rid of this failure as well so this is my first construct and it is also giving a reference error here so we can capture this parameter here and then it will not give you that because you are passing it as captured here the http service is passed here so now if you compile at least you don't get any error within this block because we already cleared whatever uh, things like success and failure so first the first block is already created you create an observable if, if you are returning an observable for this function you're creating a return of this observable by calling a function called create which is giving you a parameter called i'm just calling it a subscriber and as soon as you get a result you're using the on next to send the signal so because this is an http call it we are you are not expecting it to keep on sending you multiple signals so as as soon as you get an on next we can actually terminate this signal by calling something called as on completed so whatever is happening right now is you created this observable you made a http call and you send that signal through on next and and then you are not expecting any more signals to come from this response so as soon as that is done we can always call on completed to end this subscription the subscription so a subscriber can end sending sending sig stop sending signals in two cases one is when you call an on completed or if it encounters an error so these are the two cases where this observable can stop sending signal so this is done